Hey guys, welcome back to Joe's RC Corner, and today we're going to be back on the Cricut. So we're going to be working on uh, the front end a little bit. Uh, might do a little bit of wiring, uh, but for the most part, we're going to start working a little bit more on the cowl because I want to try to get that cosmetically uh, ready to go. Um, and we have some other um, reports uh, regarding the Grand Rapids and Viking engine compatibility uh, with the new uh, direct injection. So stay tuned, guys, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, guys, so like I said, we have some uh, some interesting things that came up in regards to the Grand Rapids um, EIS system and the Viken engine. Um, and um, it seems to be that uh, basically the um, Grand Rapids ends up sending out your EIS systems um, more or less kind of set up for the old uh, version of the Viken engine, uh, where you could get a pulse width um, from the... ECU going into the Grand Rapids system, which would give you your, your fuel flow. Um, well, Grand Rapids, as, as I guess, didn't catch up uh, with the uh, new version of the ECU and the new engine with a direct injection. So uh, what that entails is fuel flow from the pulse width does not work on this EIS system. So I have to send this EIS back to Grand Rapids. They need to flash the firmware on it, I believe, uh, and uh, add the standard fuel flow so you can use a transducer um, in the back here from the header tank to the engine. So I need to order a red cube uh, transducer, which will give me my fuel flow. It has an impeller in there, so as the fuel goes through, it spins it, tells the EIS how much fuel is being used. So this needs to be sent back. So I pulled it out of my panel. Uh, I need to get the, get the paperwork all started and get this in the mail. Uh, so that way, uh, uh, Grand Rapids can go ahead and get the update on it. Now, while it's there, I'm going to do a little bit other updates to it. Um, this unit does not have the pedostatic system in there. And uh, I wanted to have airspeed and altitude on this display as a backup unit. So um, I'm going to go ahead and have them update that unit with that uh, firmware and with the hardware built into that uh, as well. Uh, while it's there. So a little bit more money to spend on the uh, Cricut, but in the end, I think that's going to be worth it. We'll have fuel flow uh, displayed on the EIS and on the EFIS, um, and we'll also be able to uh, have that as a backup uh, altimeter and airspeed sensor. So uh, that's going to be getting boxed up and getting sent back to Grand Rapids for updates. It should be about uh, a little more than a week or so, and then I'll get that back, and then we can start working on connecting all of my avionics again. So in the meantime, what I think we're going to be getting done today is uh, went ahead and we set the pitch of the prop. Um, going by Jan's videos when he was setting the pitch on, on uh, the Whirlwind, uh, I believe it went to a 20 pitch for the starting point. Um, and then we'll adjust the pitch based on what I need once we're flying and everything. So... But I think for starting the engine and everything, that should work just fine. Um, if the uh, engine seems to be working hard or anything like that, then uh, we can always adjust. But what I'm going to do today is we want to start working on some of the body work on that cowl because I do want to start getting that ready for paint, uh, and then we can get that decal on there. I do also need to cut my exhaust port. My exhaust is uh, a little bit too long. Uh, I think he's, uh, Jan mentioned maybe about two inches of exposure of that pipe coming out of the cow. So I'm going to go ahead and double check that measurement and uh, make sure that that's set right as well. And then we'll take the muffler off, get my grinder, snip it down to the right length, uh, smooth off the edges, and then put it back in. So that'll look pretty good. So we'll go ahead and we'll, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Uh, I got this pink foam uh, over here. And this pink foam is going to be, is going to serve as my, um, filler uh, right up here so I can start blending this in, get a fiberglass bondoed and uh, let that dry. Then maybe tomorrow if the uh, outside kind of dries up a little bit, maybe we'll set up the paint booth um, and uh, I don't know, maybe we'll be able to get that painted tomorrow. I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. 
but then the cowl would be pretty much be done. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's get moving. Okay guys, so welcome back. And as you can see, we've gotten a lot done here, uh, working on that body work here. So um, we're, we cut a piece of that pink high density foam and we made a new ring to go around this. And now we're working on uh, filling it right now with some Bondo to smooth that all in. We're gonna start working on sanding that all in nicely and smooth and uh, blending it in with the prop over there with the spinner. And uh, so this side needs a little bit more filler on this side. So we're going to work that area up a little bit, uh, sanding in between and uh, making sure and then checking as we go. Uh, the rest of the ring down around this side all looks really good. Uh, so once that's done, then what we're going to do is we're going to take some fiberglass and we're going to wrap that whole area up there with some two ounce fiberglass, probably a couple of sheets uh, to blend that in nicely. And once that's done, we can do a si uh, final sand. Uh, we'll have to do some, uh, uh, probably a little more filler around there just to sand it and blend it in. Uh, but we're looking good here, guys. Okay guys, so we're closed up now because it started raining, but I did finish, I did manage to finish up my, uh, my blending my cowl up here in the front and add in, in the, uh, the space here. So, um, like I mentioned, what we used, let me grab the piece here. We use this pink foam. It's really high density foam. It's very light, doesn't weigh a thing. Um, but I glued pieces onto the front of this and then sanded it and sanded and sanded. Man, there was a lot of bodywork sanding in there. And then once that was glued and sanded roughly to the shape, I took some Bondo and went ahead and cleaned that up. Now my gap is looking really consistent throughout the whole thing. I really I'm really happy with that. Now the spinner is maybe slightly higher than, the, than here, so I could build this up a little bit more, but I think I'm gonna leave it. I'm pretty happy with that. It's very, it's, it's, it's not very noticeable. Um, I also straightened out this side. So now this side is now blends nicely with the spinner. This side blends nicely with the spinner here. And uh, I'm really happy with that. It looks really good. So tomorrow, what my plan is, we're going to take some of that two ounce fiberglass cloth and we're going to go back about this far. And when I have a sheet of fiberglass, a couple layers of it actually, 
um, and then wrap it around this front end. And this is going to hold all of this together, all of this body work that we did here, because we want this to stay for a long time. It's up near the prop, so I don't know what kind of vibrations it's going to see, but we don't want any vibrations there, and we, want, we don't want this to start cracking apart. So we're going to do a fiberglass piece that goes all the way around. Um, probably put a layer of micro balloons in this gap here and fill that up. Uh, same on the other side. And uh, that will... Uh, clean this whole area up, look at it, not make it look nice. We'll sand it, and then we'll probably do another light coat of Bondo on this. Maybe, not even Bondo, maybe just some uh, body filler, some of the red stuff, and just smooth that in. Let that dry over the whole week. Do a quick sand to blend it all in nicely. And then we'll be able to take this cow outside, weather permitting, in the booth get it primed, get it painted, and she will be done. Man, I will tell you guys what, uh, cows are not my favorite thing to do. I'm not bad at it, but I don't like doing them. Um, but I am really happy with how this came out. Um, Jan also made a, a comment that uh, to uh, before I... Uh, Go ahead and rivet the this inside. I'm going to play around with some washers on the back side and see if we can space out. It's more needed on the other side than this side. And space out those uh, the hinges a little bit. Try to make that pin a little bit easier to go in and out of. This top one up here on the both sides, those go easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those go really easy. I didn't have any issues with that. I'm really happy with how that worked. Um, and, uh, I do still have to make up the one up here, but I didn't want to do that yet because I did not finish up underneath this panel. I need to pull that panel out. Um, and like I mentioned, I need to get this sent out back to Grand Rapids, uh, to get them to, uh, go ahead and flash some new firmware on that and, uh, also add the pedo static. So I have a backup system, uh, tomorrow, um, all we're going to get done is the fiberglass and up there. And uh, want to let that primer or, or let that dry, and uh, then we'll be able to just do some final work there. But man, I tell you what, I am super stoked with how that came out. That came out really nice. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll we'll get back on it tomorrow. Okay, we'll get that finished up and uh, see if we can't get that ready for prime and paint for next week, guys. All right, so here's the end of the video for this week, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell so you get that notification for the next video because we're getting very close to uh, prepping this airplane, or the engine for that matter, for running. So um, we've gotten most of the equipment here installed, ready to go uh, for the fuel system. I just need to finish a few more things. I will not have my EIS when I start the engine for the first time, but that's okay. We're not going to run it very long. I just want to hear it run, man. Um, I know she'll run, but I just want to hear it myself. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to run it with the prop on or not, because I'm going to be running it here at my house. Uh, may run it without the prop. That way I can also get up to the, uh, to the coolant and uh, burp it, because we got to get that coolant in there and get that uh, flowing through. So we'll see how that's going to turn out, guys. It'll probably be a live video, so make sure you do have that bell, uh, that bell clicked on your subscription because you're going to get notified that way that I am going to be performing that live, and uh, I want you guys to be a part of it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget the bell, guys. Also, check out my good friend over at Arrowworks Productions. Uh, Adam's building a super duty, and he's doing a really great job on it. Make sure you check out his channel as well. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video. So keep building and keep flying, guys. Bye now.